Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Got Caleb Danner behind the camera. Again, my right hand man, camera man, Caleb. Special thanks to him. Make sure you guys thank him for helping us out here, making some quality videos and his edits. He's been doing editing for me too. You know, dad does oversee the editing, but Caleb's been doing a damn good job editing. Uh, right now we're working on something old school. It's Pete's uncle's car. You guys know Pete. Some of you don't. I'm at Latour's Auto in South Park. Let's be clear about this. Not Latour's Auto Sales, which is in Elizabeth. Different person. Latour's Auto Service, which is in South Park, Pennsylvania. That's where we do most of our stuff. This is Pete's uncle's car. It is a 1990 old school Lincoln Town car that has a five liter engine and the complaint is it doesn't start <laughs> and we're suspecting fuel pump and let me begin with what i just showed caleb off camera all right so we've done this a few times you guys that have been following me for a while will know what i'm looking for uh, i'm looking for a check engine light i'm just turning the key on looking for a check engine light and what i told caleb off camera we tried to start there is if there's no check engine light on and there isn't that is a good guide that our computer system is not alive and that this car doesn't need a fuel pump the suspected fuel pump problem if there's no check engine light on that suggests to me we're going in another direction but what i was just informed is there is black tape over the check engine light you can see it blink yeah there. and it's underneath the um glass so i can't even take it off even if i wanted to <laughs> there's black tape over the check engine light so a variable with the check engine light and let's be clear about what we're dealing with here this is an old school uh electronic engine control 4 eek 4 eec 4 uh, system that uses an under hood data link connector and i didn't bring my old school scan tool connectors with me so using the scan tool to check for codes is not a good place to start so we're looking for direction what's causing this no start and that's where we went after the check engine light what i like to do with fords look at the check engine light crank it over if the check engine light goes out when you're cranking that tells you you have a good crank signal so again a lot of you know this test because i've been teaching it for years just looking for direction can't use any of those tests because the whole dash cluster goes out when we're cranking it can't use that test anyway and my check engine light is buried by tape although i could see the corner of it but again everything goes out when we're cranking you heard the car tries to start so just based off of what everyone's suspecting i think we'll check our fuel pressure first i, I typically will start with spark and you know we can do a quick spark test too um but I, I think just given by the car trying to start let's let's go after fuel pressure all right fortunately for us ford gives us a schrader valve that we can check our fuel pressure so this is a nice easy test if this did not have a schrader valve i'd probably start by checking for spark uh, some people like to put a screwdriver in the schrader valve and see if you have fuel that's not a good idea guys i have some residual fuel here that just ran out but that is not a good indication of pressure you can have one or two psi in there and and say hey i got fuel when you push the schrader valve down that's not good enough we need a pressure reading not to mention raw fuel under the hood of a car in any way shape or form is dangerous so let's be safe Cranking it. All right, so we have a fuel pressure problem. I'm gonna crank it just a little bit longer. All right, no fuel pressure. So there's a few things that can cause no fuel pressure. One can be the computer's not turning the pump on. And, um, uh, believe it or not on some systems you can have say a crank sensor fault that's not feeding the computer and then the computer's not turning the relay on not turning the pump on however on this system and on most systems there are two inputs that are used to turn the fuel pump on 
Okay, so the engine computer controls it. One of those is the crank signal, RPM signal. I'm talking to Caleb too, as we're teaching you guys, I'm teaching my son. So RPM, we need an RPM signal for the computer to turn the relay on. Caleb, we could have a crank sensor fault. All right, what says we don't have a crank sensor fault is when I turn the key on, there's a wake up that occurs for the engine computer. That's the second input. So all you need to do is turn the key on and what the computer will do is prime the system. It runs the pump for one to two seconds. Computer turns the fuel pump relay on and then we should see the pressure gauge rise. So the fact that we don't have a prime either is telling me I'm not worried about the crank sensor. I'm not worried about the RPM. So one more time, Caleb, I'm just gonna cycle the key. I want you to focus on that fuel pressure gauge. Tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. Key is off, key is on. We should be getting a prime right now. Key is off, I'll wait a few seconds, turn the key back on. We should be getting a prime right now. You're not seeing anything, are you? Okay. So, for you guys following, if you have fuel pressure when you cycle the key, but you don't have fuel pressure or fuel pressure drops off while you're cranking, you have a crank sensor issue. We're not worried about that. Or a computer problem, something going on there related to that, uh, but a computer problem wouldn't be the right thing to say because the computer controls the prime as well. So you don't see that often, but what I'm getting at here, guys, there's no reason for me to check spark on this car. I'm going right with our fuel system. And nice for us, we have a relay, our pump relay right here. So we can do some nice quick tests on the pump circuit. Uh, these are known for power relay problems. I have other videos on this system where we had a broken power wire over underneath the battery. I'll make sure I put a link in the description of this video. And also pay attention guys to the icon on my left. Should be on this side. There'll be a little eye. It's my left. It's your right. Yeah. A little eye icon up in the top of the corner. If I put this on YouTube, you're going to see that little eye show up right now. If you click on that, you can watch the other video that I'm referring you to, which is that open wire to this power relay. I'm not suspecting that's where we're going with this. Um, although, as I'm talking, it is possible that this computer is not turning this pump relay on at all. We're going to start with the relay. If we find that the relay is not being turned on, then we're going to switch gears and start attacking this a little bit different. But fuel pump relay next is going to tell me really everything I need to know about where I'm going. All right, so this is my pump relay right here. And um, I'm going to go grab my U activate tool. I, I, I can do this just with a test light, but when you have a tool that makes life awesome why not use it i'm going to grab it shameless tool plug uh, when i find a tool that is this valuable it needs to be plugged this is where you'll find it aes wave this is one of those tools it really is it has so much use that um right we use this just recently to troubleshoot your brother's uh faulty ignition coil on his car just things we can do with the tool i love this tool and i just grabbed the wrong adapter all right, so is let's. Ah, uh, good question. This is a automatic transmission. We're good. It's in park, and we're energizing a fuel pump circuit, unlike we did on Jake's car, where we are energizing a starter relay. We're not doing that. We're we're on a fuel pump relay. Oh, yeah. When I flip this switch on this car, we're just going to make the fuel pump run. So what Caleb was asking me about, guys, that you don't know, is the one we did on his brother's car that uh, I'll put a link here too, guys. You can watch the no crank, no, sorry, no start diagnosis on my other son's car where Caleb and I were using this tool and that's what he was asking me about. Um, so f first thing we do is after the, we go after the relay. Notice this is a five pin relay though. And this is a four pin design. We shouldn't need that middle one um, let me just look inside there for a second. I don't even think there's a terminal in there. And there is not. Let's get a shot of this. Try to get straight on that and you'll notice. Tell me when you're focused. There's a missing terminal in the middle. You can see metal on all four, but the, the middle one, there's nothing there. Got it. Okay. 
On this relay, here's your control coil side, makes a magnetic field. And when it makes a magnetic field, it connects this terminal to this terminal. Okay, these are normally open. These are load side, control side. This middle pin that's not being used is also a load pin with no coil control, no magnetic field here. This pin and this pin are electrically connected. It's a normally closed contact. When we make a magnetic field here, it opens that contact and closes this contact. Okay, so this normally closed contact is not being used. So what I'm getting at is it is not a problem that this tool is missing that middle terminal. We're not even using it. All right, back to this tool. I like that everything kind of clicked there when I was moving that. It might be an indication of a problem. Everything I'm about to show you guys can be done with a test light. Um, we don't have to buy special tools to check a relay circuit. So I want to be clear about that. And I have plenty of other videos where I can show you guys how to check a fuel pump relay circuit just using a regular incandescent light. And again, I'll put links in the description of this video for other ones. You, you don't have to have this tool. But for, for right now, so we're clear about what I've plugged in, um, if the control side of the relay is being activated, which requires a power and a ground on the two pins, the, this pin and this pin are the control. I need a power, I need a ground. Mm -hmm. When there's a power and ground, this light's gonna light. Okay, so that's my first test. And that's gonna tell me if my engine computer is doing what it should be doing to this relay. When I turn this key on, you can focus here, Caleb. When I turn this key on, we're gonna see that light light. It'll light for one to two seconds and then turn off. That's our first test. That'll be our prime. All right, key is off, key is on. And that did not light, did it? Key is off. Key is on. Ah. All right, cranking it now. All right. So it's an input problem? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's either an input problem or my engine computer's not alive. And that test alone says this car does not need a fuel pump, right? Um, in fact, I could probably, depending on the load side, I could probably flip this switch right now, which would manually energize the two load side contacts, and we should get fuel pressure. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Good. You good? Yep. Ready? nothing so no load side either why well it could be that we got no power there at all and that we're dealing with the same thing i dealt with in that last town car i worked on with the eek 4 that had the broken wire over there now i need my test light we gotta do some checks and i heard some weird clicking over here too could just be a fault with the relay check my test light make sure i have a a good power feed or I'm sorry a good ground okay. brake light or brake lines usually make pretty good grounds my load side should be one of these two should be hot it is and the fact that we have no fuel pressure I am sending power to that pump that pump should be running So we may have a fuel pump issue still, but why is my control side not working? All right, so control side, I should have a power on one of these two guys. I do not. And that comes from the power relay. The power relay is right next to this. We have two separate problems here. power relay is the one to the right and I know Ford's the power relay feeds power to the control side of the fuel pump relay uh, one of these two on the control side should be lit and it is not all right so power relay next and I should have on the control side of the power relay I should have one of these two should be lit and it's not 
Load side's good. So right now, I just, so we're clear, I'm on the load side of the power relay. That should feed power to my control side of my pump. There it is. That's the power I was missing, Caleb. What's that? The control side, so load side of this relay feeds power to the control side of this one, but we still don't have a pump that's operating. And I don't have a power relay that's turning on. I'm missing a power feed on the control side of the power relay. Not there, not there. So now I need a diagram because I need to know where that's coming from. We need a little drawing here? Yeah, Okay. I do. <laughs> All right, so I have a power relay. I have a fuel pump relay. Fuel pump relay, that's the load side. Here's my, here's my fuel pump. Control side is the coil. Control side of the power relay. So this is fuel pump relay. This is my power relay. All right, power relay feeds all kind of solenoids. Uh, some other relays, yeah, you said it feeds mass them. airflow usually, and one of the legs of this, now it feeds a whole bunch of different branches of things, but one of the legs comes up to the control side of this relay. Okay. When we checked the fuel pump relay, we were missing control side power, okay? okay. And so that's what put me over to the power relay. Yeah. And so when I put my activate tool in here, I was manually closing this. This is power, it goes to battery. And when I manually closed that, what you saw is I, I now had power on my fuel pump relay. My fuel pump relay is controlled by the PCM, ECM. It's a ground side switch transistor, okay? But it needs power to be able to, power and ground. And what we were missing is we were missing the power feed. Yeah. Right, so that's why, and by the way, this would go to battery positive too. And um, I did activate this and my pump still did not, no pressure. We still had no pressure. So that's what I'm saying. We have two so problems. Because if I'm energizing this manually, which I am with my U activate tool, I'm closing this and I did confirm with my test light that I am sending power through and the fact that our pump didn't produce pressure means we have a problem there. Yep. But now we can't go after that yet because my fuel pump relay is not energizing because yeah. I have no power here on the control side. When I manually load tested this, closing this switch with my U-Activate, I was able to get power back. Here's what we're missing. We're missing our, there is no power on, on either side, yeah. zero volts on either side of this. The power relay goes to ground all the time and it's ignition fed. We have an ignition positive feed. It's not computer controlled. We are missing power here. So here's how it works. Turn the key on, ignition power comes down here. Mm -hmm. It's already grounded, makes a magnetic field, closes the power relay, feeds the solenoid, feeds the relays, feeds the MAF, feeds a leg over to the fuel pump relay. Right? Yep. And then the computer is now in control of our, remember two inputs here. We said, wake up wake up and RPM are two inputs way over here that the computer will ground that. But for the computer to do its job, it needs to have power here. For this to have power here, this needs to be closed. For this to be closed, we need to have power and ground here. And we are missing power on this PCM power relay. So I need to know where it comes from. I need a diagram now. Yeah. Make sense? That makes sense. Okay. All right, so Caleb had a good question off camera and he was asking me about these, uh, the wake up signal here and how's the computer turn on? Well, technically speaking, Caleb, this wake up signal is simply an ignition positive feed that when you turn the key on, you send power into the computer and it powers up the board. It's basically your on off switch for the engine computer. It also is gonna have some other battery feeds that come in that are hot all the time. Those guys would be hot all the time hot all the time. And then this one is an ignition feed that's only hot when you turn the key on. That is your wake up signal. Gotcha. That's what wakes this computer up and initiates 
many things, not just closing of that switch, yeah. but that's one of the things it does. Kind of like your PlayStation when you first turn it on, it goes to the login, the screen where it says, you know, it's PlayStation and sings you a little jingle and shows you a symbol. That's part of the program. Of course, it does more than that when you turn mm -hmm. the power button on. Same way with the engine computer. That ignition feed is a wake up signal that uses to energize that relay uh, driver for one to two seconds. Okay. And then it shuts it off until it has an RPM signal. Gotcha. It's a safety. And it, the reason it's there is you're running the car, right? And so you're going down the road, you got RPM, you get into an accident and you sever a fuel line. And the fuel pump, we can't have, we don't want to empty the fuel tank on the ground. We already sever severed a fuel line. The engine's going to stall. And so as soon as the engine stalls, because we've severed a fuel line and there's no fuel getting to the engine, the computer will shut the relay off to keep from emptying the tank on the ground. It's a safety measure. We cannot have a fuel pump run all the time without having some safety measure. Okay. So you could have engineered it to turn the key on. As soon as you turn the key on, you make the relay close and keep it closed the whole time and not use this input. It would work. Mm -hmm. The problem is, you get into an accident yeah, you and you sever a fuel line, you will empty the tank on the ground. All right, there's my power relay. Pretty crappy diagram, but it comes from fuse number 13. It says FB. I don't know if that's inside the car or if that is under the hood, uh, but that's what I'm looking for, fuse number 13. Hey, they actually have them numbered. I was just about to ask. What's they're, wrong with the fuse box? they're numbered and they're marked. Oh, they're not numbered. <laughs> they're not numbered. That's uh, fast. No, yeah, they're not. They just have the number of the fuse and they have letters. There's letters. Yeah, Ford never got these right. Ever. I think I remember this being inside the car. I don't, we're just going to check them all. Do I have the key on is the question. I do not. All right, key's on. I'm just going to run down the line here. I'm looking for any that is not lit on either side. So far, so good on all of these fuses. That one's blown. That one's blown. Nope. Just corroded. The top of it's corroded, not necessarily the fuse itself. Okay, those are good. I'm not worried about the maxi fuses, but we'll check them anyway. Just because we're here. Alright, going inside the car. All right, just going down the line again, inside the car. That one's not lit at all. We'll come back to that. The one that's not lit at all might be a concern. That five amp one's not lit at all either. This one's blown. This 15 amp is blown. Do you see that? Yeah. Lit on this side and not on this side. Yeah. So we had two fuses that weren't lit at all. And one this one and, and this one, and then this one's blown. Of course, what we want to do is go after the blown fuse first. And of, you know, Ford doesn't give us, what it, they did give us a number, it was 13, didn't they? Yeah, 13. Check it out, 13. Is that the one that's the that one that's blown. blown. Hey. Thing is, is fuses don't blow um, unless there's a reason, Caleb. In other words, yeah. uh, there's a short somewhere in the circuit that blew this fuse. But this should at least restore our. Wow. Let's see if uh, I don't think it'll restore our fuel pressure because I think our pump is messed up too. But see if you can get a shot of that fuse that's blown. Can't really see it myself with my naked eye. It's blown. Okay, we couldn't get you a good camera shot of that fuse. It's blown, guys. I'm just gonna plug in another fuse. And I should be lit on both sides now, and I am. Okay, 
All right, now we go back under the hood. Notice right away, yeah. power relay is showing me. So you my control on. side of my power relay is now activated. Remember, it's um, externally powered and grounded, no computer control with the power relay. So look here. What we just fixed is power relay, control side, that coil that's lit right down there is this coil here. And the power feed, this was the blown fuse right here. The fuse, I'm not drawing it in the picture. Yeah. And I pull that fuse back out, you're gonna see that light go off. Watch, you stay focused there. That's fuse out. Yeah. That's, that's fuse back in. All right, so now, now, with that fixed, we should have control side power. That relay should be energized now. My power relay should now be energized. Plug in my power relay. And now my control side of my fuel pump relay should now have power. It's glowing dimly, which is just because of a driver um, issue, not an issue, but because we have a power feed now and we have a bleed inside that engine computer through that driver so that light can be a little bit misleading but watch it now we're gonna see our prime and we're gonna see our rpm we should so I'm gonna turn the key off and back on and that light should light for one to two seconds did it? Yeah, it was strong and then it dropped. Strong and dropped? Less than, less than a second. So that was my wake up signal. Watch it again. Key off. Engine computer's powered down. I'm gonna power up the engine computer. What do we got? It was bright so that's, that would be my wake up. That would be my prime signal. The computer is controlling this relay now, okay? And when I crank it, it should stay lit the whole time I'm cranking. So watch that light again, cranking it. <laughs> Is it? Yep. Stayed lit the whole time. Yeah, right. So, two problems. One, the PCM power relay fuse was blown. We've got to track that down. Number two, remember what we said when we started? No fuel pressure. We yeah. still do not have fuel pressure. Now, granted, I had, uh, oh, I had the switch on. I didn't even realize I had the switch on. Um, what I was gonna say is you're not gonna have fuel pressure with the relay removed unless you turn the switch on, right? My switch is on, still have no fuel pressure. Let's make sure we're getting power down to the pump. That's power in, that's power out. Remember we started here with this tool and we yeah. said what? There's something going on with this fuel pump. But we didn't have control side power for the relay, right? We fixed that temporarily until that fuse blows again. We have two problems. Something blew the fuse for the power relay. We gotta look into that, but we're not done with our fuel system yet. Our pump is not running. Now with that energized right now manually, I'm gonna go beat on the tank, see if we can get fuel pressure back. You can stay focused on the, on the uh, pressure. I'm gonna go beat on the tank. Nothing? Nothing. Can't really get to where I need to. Okay. It's always it's always worth a shot. All right, amperage. I am interested in amperage. We've done this before, Caleb where I did a current measurement right here. I'm interested to know if I have any current flow here at all because that'll prevent me from having to jack up this car and check my powers and grounds underneath. So I need an amp clamp. All right, I'm using an inductive low amp probe and I'm going to, we'll just go digital multimeter so I can make a nice big number for you guys to look at. Zero my amp probe connect this around here we have no current flow at all 
zero, zero. All right, let's do a continuity test to our pump. This is power, right? That's power, and that's power going to the pump. Now with the pump circuit off, we should be able to connect our test light to battery positive, and that should take me down through the pump motor contacts. I'll, I'll draw this for you in a minute, Caleb. Um, I am switching this. Switching my lead to battery positive. And we have an open, we have an open between here and the pump. It's, now what we have to do is make sure we don't have an open in the wire. We have to go underneath. We don't have a choice. I can, that was a real fast uh, test here. Uh, let's see. Do I need to keep that on or not? That's the question. I will leave it go for a sec. Come here. All right, so here's where we are. We're jumping this. We're forcing battery through, right? Test light is lighting here and here on our relay. And then what I just showed you guys is we put an amp clamp around our tool right here. And we have zero amps. So we have an open. There's an open, there's no current flow. Yeah. Is our open our pump? Is our open our pump ground? Is our open our pump feed? By me putting a test light here on this pin to battery positive with the switch open, I'm no longer closing this switch. That test light should find a ground through the brush contacts of the electric motor. Mm -hmm. Electric motor on the inside has uh, um, commutator segments and it has windings and the brushes sit here and here. So you have a negative and you have a positive brush. We should have continuity through the positive brush through one of the windings out on the way out to ground. That light should be lighting. And the fact that light's not lighting suggests our pump's bad. Okay. But I just have to go underneath and check power and ground to make sure. Yeah. We've done this before this on the on, Hyundai, the yeah, Hyundai we did this video. On that, um, the Dodge Dakota we did one? We did it on the Dakota and we just recently, more recently, did it on the Hyundai. Yeah. So we'll put links to videos for that for you guys too. So pay attention to the links in the description of this video. We'll put some more of this. But I have to verify that because I have no amperage here. If I had amperage here, I was hoping to see like 10 amps. If I had 10 amps and no fuel pressure, we'd be done. Put a pump in it. Yeah. But now I got to crawl underneath this car. I don't have a choice. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. All right, we're going underneath. This is another advantage of having this tool. I want to do some loaded circuit tests. Okay, by loaded circuit, I'm saying we need to send power down to that pump. Remember, to send power down to that pump, I have to crank the engine over, have an RPM signal, or I only get a one second pulse. With a tool like this, I can flip my switch on and I can send power down there all the time. And that's going to help us a lot right now in what we're doing. So we're going to do that. Um, you guys will probably see, we can leave the amperage measurement here. When I put my test light to ground, in fact, I'll show that real quick because we saw that in our Hyundai video and it had me thrown for a loop for a minute. We're going to see the amperage of my test light. As long as I have a good ground on my test light, that is. We're going to measure the amperage of my test light. And there it is, a minus 0.2. That's 200 milliamps. You don't have to show that. That'll show yeah, up on yeah, that. But that's my test light. So when I'm under there checking my power feeds, what you're going to see, guys, with the amperage is you'll see my test light amperage. That's what that is. Wait, how is that reading your test light? All right, so look. Power comes in here, loops yeah, through, through, loops yeah. through, comes out to the green side, yeah. down to the pump. And with my, with my meter, my test light going to ground, it's looping from here, power, through here, and through my test light to ground there, and we're reading amperage. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay? That's what threw us off, if you remember, when we were scope testing that Hyundai. I was like, we have an open circuit here, and then I'm, I'm like, oh, that's my test light. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Okay. All right, so that is on. Circuit's activated. We're just going to use the test light, go underneath and do our checks with this fancy tool right here. Cool? All right. 
All right, ready when you are. Yeah, and let's be clear to everyone else that we have jack stands under this car. Why don't you pan over on this one? So this one, this one, this one. Okay, we're being safe here, guys. No way I'd put me and my son in danger. Okay, so I need a good ground under this rusty ass car, which is gonna be tough. And probably gonna end up getting shit in my face. Finding grounds. This is this is the nice thing about having a power probe is I can bring a bring my own ground down here with me. Right right from the battery. That might work. Alright, unfortunately, this pump design is one that I'm not gonna be able to really back probe it. I gotta unplug this. It'd be nice to see my 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 ammeter right now, but one of these four, two of them go to the sending unit for the gauge and two are for the pump. So one of these four should be lit right now. It'd be that guy. That's my, that should be my pump feed. That's the pink wire. What's, what do you need, Skinner? Uh, there's a blue box under the hood that's connected. It's got an on off switch on it. Yep. Can you flip that off, off and flip it back on? Okay, thank you. That's all I needed. So how's my power feed to my pump? Good. It is good. My wiring's fine all the way back here. The only other, other thing I need to check is this pump ground, which is the one next to it. And I need a power feed to do that um, because I'm not loaded, loaded circuit testing it. It's how I'd like to do it. Back probe it. Let me see if I can back probe this connector. I'm going to plug it back in. So I don't have a power feed back here. Watch your eyes. Okay. My ground is the bottom wire. I'm gonna back probe the feed again. We'll do a double load. One of the loads are gonna be my test light. The other be the pump, though the pump circuit's open, so really it's not a load. I can't back probe this terminal. Just have to make sure my ground isn't open. These old cars, you can have an open in a ground. It can really mess you up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab my power probe. Just connecting this up to the battery. Be right back. So one of the things I've learned about my new flashlight is the battery life on this is not as good as my Baco light that I've been using. It's a little bit brighter of a light, but I've used the Baco for much longer before it, this thing's getting dim on me. Just need a battery feed. I'm using my power probe for that. And I'd rather use the incandescent test light because it's a little bit more of a load than what the power probe does. It's gonna be my bottom wire, the top wire here. This should light if my ground is at least intact enough to carry some kind of current flow. I need three hands. What do you need me to do? If evolution is true, generations of mechanics will grow a third hand. Okay, so watch, I'm giving this the other side of my test light a power. So this is a ground. That is a good ground. There's our ground is not open. That's what that means. This needs a pump. We're done. Sweet. We're done with the pump side. Now why'd that fuse blow? So there's there's a good ground for the pump. And then my power feed for the pump was the other one. We already showed that. So the there was current going through your test light to that and that was connecting to ground? Correct. Sweet. Yep. And it was only 200 milliamps. I mean, it's not a load like the pump would produce, but what we do know is we had an open, right? Yeah. And our open is in the pump itself. That's what that tells us. We have a bad fuel pump, no question about it. Now I might be able to beat on that some more and get it to work, but we already tried that. I'm done beating on it. Let's get out of here. What I'm looking for is my fuse boxes. That's the under hood one. See the letters? Remember me about the letters? I'm like, why are they lettered, bastards? Um, what I want to know is what else is on fuse number 13. That is my main concern. What else blew this fuse? 
So there's fuse 13. You can see the radio, mm -hmm. the ignition coil, and the power relay are on that circuit. Okay, so um, I am concerned about uh, wiring touching ground on this. Hey, um, your radio is also on that fuse that blew. So the fuse that blew to this pump, I'm speaking to Pete's um, uncle, right? Uncle. Um, the fuse that blew, the radio, the power relay, control side of the power relay, and ignition coil were on that. Separate from the pump itself. So what were you doing? You were cleaning off snow and it was running. It was running. It was running. Yep. As it was running, it just quit running. I thought it just thawed out. Here's the thing, like to plug in the open fuel pump into this really doesn't go together. Red with a light green. Let me go back to my engine computer for a second. So you, uh, this doesn't change what we're doing. You absolutely, no question about it, you need a fuel pump, okay? And I would do the fuel filter as well. But what I'm concerned about is why this other fuse blew. And it's not tied in electrically to the pump circuit directly. So it's a separate issue. You know, why they blew at the same time, I don't have an explanation for you there, but I will say this to the rest of you guys. Imagine doing this job and properly, well, you wouldn't have been able to properly troubleshoot a faulty fuel pump without doing the steps that we did. We had a blown fuse for the power relay that feeds on the control side of the power relay. Let's be clear about that. It was not load side, control side of the power relay. Because when you talk about load side of the power relay, you have all this other stuff that's involved. Um, if you would have just put a pump in this, you would have ended up still having a car not starting is my point. We have two problems here, a blown fuse and a faulty pump. I just need to make sure I'm covering all my bases. Just want to look at this power relay fuse circuit again. Yeah, that's it, fuse number 13. So you can see that that fuse runs in to the control side of this relay. We're not talking about the load side contacts of this power relay. The only possible cause would be a short in that leg of the circuit as related to the power relay. So let's go back and talk about that. All right, so see the red light green, that guy right there? That goes to the control side. Then we got a radio and ignition coil. All we're gonna do is a visual of the wiring harness going to this ignition yeah. coil. We are debating lights in the Astro, which I just bought. Nice bright light, but this nightstick definitely has longer battery life, no question about it. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty bright too. So I know you guys shop for lights too, as I do. Anyway. Ignition coil is this guy here, Caleb. This is my ignition coil. Let me see the color wire on that real quick. You can stay there. Yeah, it's a black wire is the feed. So black wires, this is the power feed to the coil. And I'm just looking at the harness and where it goes. Like you look for resting points. I'm looking for areas where the harness could actually touch ground and rub through and blow that fuse. And I'm not gonna look long. I'm just gonna warn him about it. We absolutely properly diagnosed a faulty pump. Why that fuse blew. If I don't see something visually that jumps out at me very quickly, we're gonna let it go and just warn him about it. The nice thing when you're dealing with friends and family is if a customer's car, it's a little bit different. You know, you're selling the customer a fuel pump, pretty ex expensive job, fuel pump, fuel filter, and then they're gonna come back with a car stalling again if that fuse blows. That's the dangers of where we are if this was a regular customer. This is Pete's uncle and we have properly diagnosed a faulty pump and I'm okay with, with that for right now if I can't locate uh, a short um, in this circuit. And I'm, it's not looking to be the case. All right, this is my fuel pump relay and we were missing, what, control side power to the pump? 
And that would be from the, no, fuel pump. Sorry, it was power relays. Load side provides, yeah, fuel pump control power. So that's that wire. So just while I'm shaking the harness, we can look at that to know if our fuse is still good. Yeah. That was the only reason I just did that. And this harness runs along here. Hey, George. All right, on me. Yep. All right, guys, I'm not chasing this intermittent. We have another problem. This will be a case where you need to warn your customer about that fuse that blew. This fuse, is, this fuse that blew is not on the same circuit as that pump. That pump is faulty. I don't know what blew this fuse. The radio's on it. The radio could have shorted out. Who knows? In any case, you gotta warn your customer about it. This car, could come back, may come back with a blown fuse again, but still needs a pump. Everything we've done for the pump is legit. Telling Pete to put a fuel pump in this fuel filter, be good to go with that. I'm finished with this one. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you communicate with your customers would be the lesson here, especially very important lesson. Communicate with your customers what you found, what you're looking for, and then leave it, you know, Make the decision yourself. How much more time do you want to spend on this blown fuse circuit? That's gonna be up to you. I'm done. It's family. It's friends. We're, we have some cushion here. He's not gonna be mad at us after putting a pump in this if he comes back with a blown fuse again. We can at least tell him which one it is, which one is blown. Get him back here and we'll look at it again. Maybe you guys see another video out of it. Who knows? Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Well, we're back at Latour's Auto. Pete put the fuel pump in this Lincoln Town Car, and um, there was a few things I wanted to cover with you guys. One was I want to make sure we're clear on the fuse that blew, that it was not the pump, so we're going to cover that. Two, I want to get you guys an amperage reading using the um, jumper tool that we were using. Let's get an amperage measurement of the fuel pump. I want to show you the fuel pressure. And then of course, let's hear the car run. So let's start with that. That'd have been funny if it stalled. <laughs> Car's running. Let me show you what the fuel pressure looks like. One of the things that Ford has done right over the years is adding a service port. Just want to caution you guys, be careful dealing with fuel. Got a distributor cap sitting right next to this. Make sure you don't have any leaks. It's always wise to cycle the key a few times and use the pump prime before you start the car and that way you can check for leaks before you start the car. So we'll, we'll prime the system a couple times and we'll do exactly that just to be safe. Turn the key on. We're sitting about 30 PSI right now. Just eyeballing my connection down here. So we're good. Gauge is good. We're not dropping pressure. So we're not worried about a leak. We're safe to start the car. A little hesitation on this car. Not what we're doing on this video. Saw my pressure rise on the snap. The vacuum assist type regulator, normal condition there, no problems. And final piece when you're doing fuel systems is rest pressure. Again, that'll be for a different video, different topic. I do have some case studies. I'm dealing with rest pressure issues. We can add some links to the description 
of this video for that, but not for this one. Fuel pump was the fix. All right, before I forget, I'll show you this amperage measurement. Let's go back to this diagram real quick that I had drawn. I know it's messy, but I wanna be clear about what fuse blew. The fuse up here that I've listed as ignition positive that goes to this power relay, this is the one that blew. Notice what the power relay does, feeds voltage from a heavy load circuit on its way over to the fuel pump relay control side. And then there's a separate fuse, separate fuse circuit for the pump load side. So our pump was bad. I know some of you are thinking, well, maybe that fuel pump blew that fuse. That would be incorrect. That fuse is way up here and the pump circuit is down here. It's on a completely separate circuit. So this fuse that blew, we still don't know what blew it. Um, we do have knowledge now that he's driven this car for 60 miles with multiple trips, maybe 10 to 15 different trips with no problems at all. We are still concerned about that circuit, but nothing is obvious. The only other thing I could think of is when, when I was doing the edits, I had actually, um, remember I, I said I didn't like the sound of something. Like I was pushing down on this and I said, I didn't like the sound of that. And what's next to that? There's a brake line right here. It's kind of out of the shot. There is a brake line right here. And I was pushing on this and did I short that fuse out? Is it possible? Is there enough terminals on the back side of this? Yeah. You know, I might have been the one that shorted that fuse out. And that fuse was never blown in the first place. And, and by me okay. pushing, it's possible by me pushing on this box, because when I was first filming it, and I'm, I'm talking to the camera now too, but when I was filming this, I had, um, I, I remember making a comment that when I was, I was kind of pushing it down on here on top of this brake line. And I might, well the power relay is this one, so it would have been, let me look at it real quick. Yeah, it would have been, oh, it's on the same circuit as, as this diode too. This diode's on the power relay as well. I might have grounded that on this brake line. Oh. And, and, and I blew that fuse. So in other words, I created a problem when I was troubleshooting this by, lay, by laying, laying this on, box on, 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 on this brake line. line. Okay. In fact, I'm looking at that. And there's enough exposed terminal right there. If that wire touches, I'm gonna blow that fuse. And do we have an arc mark on this, on this line? No, nah, it's hard to say, but I remember saying to the camera, cause I just edited this like last week and I'm, I'm like, it made like a crunching sound, like a, like, like something, yeah. arcing, but I didn't expect it to be arcing. I might have arced that. Let's... Yeah, it's very possible that I blew that fuse a after looking at the back side of this box. That it is absolutely possible to make Makes sense. that mistake. Because there's exposed terminal there, and if that terminal, if that terminal right there, oh yeah. Touched right. that brake line whenever well, I did. even touched up here. Yes. Anywhere. But I think I had it over oh, here on there. this brake line. Nothing. If it touched there, then, then I blew that fuse. And that makes me feel a lot better yeah. about you not being stranded. Now, granted, you know, you've been driving it and everything's yeah. been fine. Yeah. So the, the weird part about it was that fuse being blown the same time the pump, pump failed. Yeah. And that just, both of those will leave you stranded. Yeah. So yeah. you, it has to be simultaneous, which doesn't make sense because they're two separate circuits, or I blew that fuse. I caused that problem. I have to go back and look at my edits and see when I was missing voltage, but I believe- I couldn't have blew that fuse by taking this out, but I have. What did you take out? This. The ignition module? You had the module out? I took, Pete wanted me to check it, bring it down. To eh. It's possible. I might have to I, it then. I have to look at the circuit to see if the module is on that. That's the only thing I did to check it. He said, check your fuse over here, which I did. My brother, Pete. Right, that would have been. And in, in that box that you just touched yeah. is the fuel pump fuse. Right, right. He told me right. to check that. My yep. brother, Pete. Yep. 
And then we he, we he had this off. He, I told me take this off. The ignition module. Right. The and coil. I remember the ignition coil being on there. So. Yeah. And another thing yes. too, this coil was all all like, oh like. Corroded. corroded that shouldn't have blown that, that fuse okay. but but you changing this module like if the key was on or something like that i the key no, the key was off when i took the it key off key would have had to have been on for oh, it okay. to have been something okay. that you did with this module okay, no it was all everything was off but you did have the module off i so. took it off just to check it so bring it down to the bottom. I, I remember the ignition coil being on this circuit and and so my concern was within this harness but i looked at it real close okay. and I, I, would, I would say it would be that grind. Uh, we'll just cross our fingers on that one and yeah. hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll be okay. I think we will be. Okay. Um, you know, you've had 60 miles and about 15 startups with no issues. So yeah. the main thing was the pump and how do we explain the pump and that fuse blowing at the same time? For me, it's either going to be something somebody touched after the fuel pump died. So some, you know, you guys were in yeah. here playing, moving a harness yeah. or whatever, or it was me okay it's one of the two because the those two circuits do not blow would not stop working at the same time they're completely separate like i said when it went the only thing i checked was the fuse here yes and uh, i took it, that off right it's the only two things I right did. and so when i opened that up i didn't know that came apart like yes that. so i, I and you never I, were in there never in there so and so but you being in here though you were touching this harness yeah which is my which it one it was one of my concerns is somewhere in this harness we have a wire that's touching ground now i couldn't see any you know what you look for is like points of contact like see like right here where that is so yeah there's a point of contact on this yeah. AC compressor, but the wiring, I checked it, it's fine. There's nothing rubbed through. Right. So that's all you really can do, and that's why I okay. said carry the fuses with you for a little bit and yeah, make, I, oh yeah, I'll make sure that we're yeah, good. No and, and if we if I need to come back and and troubleshoot it, then we'll do that at the Yeah, I mean at if that it blows a fuse out again, I'll know I'm sure to that somewhere. Yes. So grind it out yep. Or, yep. Or and, gotta, and it's not the pump, and I'm letting my viewers know again it's it's not the fuel pump that blew that fuse. Right. All right, back to this tool. I like that everything kind of clicked there when I was moving that. It might be an indication of a problem. Okay, have my U Activate tool plugged back in. I just want to review a couple of these tests that we did. One of them that I can show you before we do the amperage measurement is the test light connected to battery positive. Find a ground the light lights. And if you remember, the um, fuel pump circuit, right, should be lit right there that is going this green port right here this is going to the pump itself where is that ground that ground is going from the positive brush through the winding of the motor to the frame of the car a good fuel pump will show you that okay that is the pump side of the circuit if you remember that was open our test light did not light when connected to battery positive it did when i went to ground Flip the switch. Not a good ground on my test light. Hear the pump run too when I did that. Okay, that pump's running right now. You can see the fuel pressure gauge kind of move too. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. It should be though. So I'm not talking about that light. We always had that light. The light I'm talking about is test light going to battery positive. Right now I'm on ground. I flip the switch. And what I'm doing is I'm sending power that's on this side all the time over to the green side, the red side, that's hot all the time, to the pump. This one goes to the pump, flip the switch, all right? We've got power there, but we never had continuity through the pump to ground, which is what the other test shows you. So again, test light to battery positive on the same terminal, switch is off. Where is this ground? Located, this ground is located through the positive brush of the pump, through the winding, on its way to ground that way. Good continuity to the pump. Current flow. Lab scope. 
one of the things that we want to develop more, and this will help some of you as far as troubleshooting goes, and that would be doing fuel pump current measurements as a guide to whether or not you need to do power and ground testing. And if you remember, when I put my amp clamp on the tool and I turned the pump on, we had zero amps. That's not what we're gonna see now. My setup, guys, amp clamp is on a 20, okay, around my fuse, or around my loop. Turn the switch on, watch the scope. Buried my scale, so let me change that to a 20. And we will set, for those of you paying attention, let's set a trigger and let's do a manual trigger and that'll hold the picture for us. Oh, let's get no trigger first, make sure we have our pattern and that I'm not upside down. I am upside down. So I want to invert that on my scope or I need to turn my amp clamp around. Okay, polarity was backwards. And now I'll flip my switch. That's six amps of current, so I do not need to be on a 20. Back to 10. Let's do that trigger again now. Positive slope, six amps, manual trigger, flip the switch. There's your initial turn on. So I do need to be on a 20 to see that. And flip the switch. That's just my switch contact there. I don't need to use the manual trigger mode. Initial current though is about, looks like about, well, we don't have to do about 13.2 amps initial turn on of this pump. Those little uh, blips at the beginning here are just the switch in this tool. That's not a problem. Um, there's other ways to do this too, which would be no trigger. Let's do that. Turn the trigger off and then turn that guy on, use the waveform buffer, freeze it, and then zoom on that. And then we can see the beginnings of this. And we can see the average amperage overall as well. Okay, so initial spike of 13 amps and then looks like an average of about six amps or so just under six amps of current. There's a lot you can do with fuel pump waveforms. Uh, this will just help you guys as far as identification goes. When you have a no pressure situation, if you can read fuel pump current, then it eliminates, potentially eliminates the need to go back and crawl underneath and check your powers and grounds. And that's the point of the test with this fuel pump current. And for you guys that have been following me for a while, you know how much interest I have in pump or electric motor initial turn on type stuff. And, and you guys can see that here in this capture in this waveform. So pretty, pretty decent looking capture. So that's it with this one. I, I don't think I forgot anything. It's a little bit difficult sometimes whenever you film the first part a few weeks ago, do the edits a week ago, and then try to fill in the gaps afterward. Any questions maybe I didn't answer? put them in the description of this video. Don't forget, if you want more training on this kind of stuff, and maybe the videos that I'm doing are not enough, you want a little bit more, I have a channel called Scanner Danner Premium that's available from my website, and you can be really part of the class that I teach at Rosedale Technical College remotely, and um, I have right now at the time that this is being filmed, which is um, April 3rd, April 4th, 2018, I have about 350 videos on that channel with 200 of them being classroom lecture type things where I'm teaching concepts and theories, description, operation, and then I have about 150 or so exclusive case studies on that channel. So be sure to check it out. There's a 14 day free trial. Again, it's available from my website. Thank you so much for joining me guys. 
I'll see you next time. Well, we're back on the, what, what kind of car is this? Town car, Lincoln Continental, Lincoln, what is this? Lincoln Town car. Lincoln Town car. <laughs> Lincoln Town car. Lincoln Town car. We are back on the Lincoln Town Car at Latour's Auto. Pete put, what? Ah, uh, come on, you ruined my intro. Pete's down there singing. We're at Latour's Auto. I'll, I'll get some audio of Pete singing.